instituted the sexual function in man and woman through which men and women are drawn to each other, it's absolutely normal to be drawn to someone of the opposite sex. And it's completely abnormal to be drawn to somebody of the same sex. Now, there are abnormal people in the world. I don't know. I don't have anything to say to them. But marriage is between a man and a woman. And this attraction, this sexual attraction is normal. It comes up in a boy or a girl when they're 14, 15 years old. And we have to teach our children it's normal. But you've got to keep that under control and direct it in such a way that because you're not going to get married for another 10 years, so you've got to keep it under control till you get married. But once you are married, the sexual function between man and woman is perfectly normal. But one has to be very careful that it is under control. Let me say a word about that as well. In 1 Corinthians, see the Bible is very plain about everything, about husband and wife loving one another, about having children, and about the sexual function. So let me mention a word about the sexual function in 1 Corinthians 7, because very few people speak about that much. 1 Corinthians 7, it says here, the sexual function between a husband and wife is called a duty. Verse 3, the husband must fulfill his duty to his wife. And likewise, the wife must fulfill her duty to her husband. Because the wife does not have authority over her own body, the husband has. And the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. And therefore, stop depriving one another sexually, except maybe for a time of fasting. Like you can fast from food for a meal or two meals. You can fast from sex for a short period of time. But the purpose should be so that you can devote yourself to prayer. And then you must come together again, verse 5. Otherwise, Satan will tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So we see there that the sexual function between man and woman is something God has given to help the man particularly to avoid temptation. So a woman must not open up her husband to temptation by not fulfilling her duty in this area. It's a duty. Many women recognize their duty as mothers to their children. Oh, it is my duty to feed my children, clothe my children. But they don't recognize their duty to their wives, to their husbands in this area. Because the woman does not desire sex as much as the man, so she doesn't often realize her, it is a duty to her husband in whom God has placed a far greater desire for this than in the woman. But what I want to say here is, sometimes the husband recognizes what it says in the first part of that verse 4, the wife does not have authority over her own body. A wife cannot say to her husband, you got no right to touch my body. If that was the case, you should not have got married. I say to every woman who has that attitude to her husband, you should never have got married. The moment you get married, you lose authority over your own body. It belongs to your husband. I'm not saying that a husband should be uh, thoughtless and ignorant ignoring his wife's aches and pains and tiredness. No, he must be considerate. But then the other part is, it says the husband doesn't have authority over his own body, verse 4, but the wife does. What does that mean? I mean, if you tell a husband, that means you should be ready to have sex with your wife anytime. Who says, I'm ready all the time. That's not what it means. You don't have authority over your body. That means, listen carefully, husbands, your wife has authority over your eyes. Not over your sexual function, which you are eager to offer her, but over your eyes. When you go to work, when you walk down the road, when you're sitting at your computer, tempted to watch pornography, remember the husband does not have authority over his own body. At that moment, your wife is not there, but she has authority over your body. And just like you tell your wife that you have authority over her body to give you her sexual function, she has authority over your body to control your eyes. Are you 
recognize you who are so eager to have authority over your wife's body, are you equally eager for your wife to have authority over your body? That you allow her to control your eyes, determine what you look at and whom you look at and not only whom you look at, how you talk to people in your office or in a place where your wife is not present. There are so many men who talk so flippantly and uh, jovially with girls and women in their office. Um, okay, that's all right, but I say, ask yourself, if your wife walked in at that moment, would you continue in this, talking in the same way to that woman? Or would you suddenly become serious? Then you know you're talking in a wrong way. There are many men who would never be sexually unfaithful to their wife, but who are unfaithful in the way they speak to other women. They are not faithful. If their wife was standing next to them, they would not speak like that. They would not smile like that. But because their wife is not there, they think they have authority over their own body. So remember, husbands, as much as you want, your, you have authority over your wife's body, be fair. Your wife has authority over your body. Now, only God sees what you do. But if you're going to be unfaithful to your wife in areas where she does not watch you, I would seriously question whether you're a Christian at all. And I would say to you, my dear brother, you need to be born again. Yes, you may say you're born again, but I don't think you've taken sin seriously in your life. You need to be born again properly. And if you're born again, you're probably a backslider. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know what is the most important requirement?